In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, my children, you will cause this to be made known to all my people. Twice the beautiful lady said this to little Maximum and Melanie of her grave warning to all mankind before disappearing into heaven. We know that any time something is repeated by God, it is meant to be heeded. It is very important. Just look at our times today, the confusion over gender and human dignity. We can hear echo from the dawn of creation, the repetition of the Almighty in Scripture. Let us make man in our image and likeness. And God created man in his, his own image. To the image of God, he created him. And throughout salvation history, God has given words to his prophets, and those prophets go out and speak with God's voice. As we profess in the creed each Sunday, he has spoken through the prophets. To Jeremiah, the Lord said, I have put my words in your mouth. And Jeremiah spoke with the words of God in the first person, with the voice of God. Would it be any different for the queen of all prophets to speak with the voice and the authority of God and to empower more prophets to go out and to make the message known to all people? In 1846, Our Lady did just that. In a setting familiar to scripture readers, on the top of a mountain, in the clouds. And just as Jeremiah was chosen young and without the aptitude for speaking, again, the most unlikely of prophets are chosen by divine predilection. The foolish things of the world hath God chosen that he may confound the wise, and the weak things of the world hath God chosen that he may confound the strong. Maximin was such a simple boy that his father recounted that it took him four years just to learn the Our Father. Melanie was almost incapable of learning two lines of her catechism, and yet these were the ones the beautiful lady chose as her prophets. The biblical term for prophet is nabi, defined by the Catholic dictionary as one who speaks, acts, or writes under the extraordinary influence of God, to make known the divine counsels and wills. The prophet's role, then, is to both proclaim and to make pro the proclamation credible. Exactly what Our Lady charged them to do. Make this known to all my people. And they were very clear about it. Maximin even compared himself to a biblical prophet in one of his interviews. He was intent on going to other countries, even after being discouraged since he didn't speak the languages. But he was unfazed. They will see my actions, he would say. The two were counted over and over again, Our Lady's words exactly as they were said to them, and not once did they deviate. She warned of blasphemy, profanation of the Lord's day, the mockery of religion. These were the things she said that made the arm of her son so heavy, so much so that she could no longer hold it back. She said that no matter what anyone did, no matter how much they prayed, they could never make up for all she has done for them. Here Our Lady is seen as the reparatrix and reconciliatrix, or reconcile of sinners making atonement for a world unwilling to do it. Hence the reason Our Lady cried tears during the whole apparition, tears that were like crystals, never hitting the ground, as they said. Around her shoulders were both roses and chains, symbolizing all the good and all the bad she receives from her children and the world. The garland of roses around her, literally a rosary, and the children saw smoke like incense rising up from them, as if it were prayers rising up to heaven, giving us the sense that they are lifting Our Lady up and helping her. But the chains were thick and heavy, weighing her down with, with the weight of all the sin of the world that she has to atone for. 
on our behalf in order to pre prevent catastrophe, to buy us more time to repent. What will you give her? Roses or chains? This is our choice. The more roses we give her, the more we can assist her, and the more we can avoid the chastisements. The roses are not just prayers, but all of our good works of reparation, all of our sufferings offered up in the state of grace. They rise like a rose-scented incense to the throne of God, borne by the hands of Our Lady. She is chained by love to help us, to implore for God's mercy. She appeared at La Salette, crying for us, during the hour of great mercy, 3 p.m., as Our Lady, as later explained by Jesus to St. Faustina, the hour her heart was crushed. God entrusted the entire order of mercy to her. Don't we owe her roses, our queen of mercy who cries for us? Let the incense of our roses of love and reparation lift the weight of those chains off her shoulders, for she loves us so much and she wants only our good. If we look at the other aspects of Our Lady's appearance at La Salette, perhaps we might see the reparation needed for sin is more clearly represented by the crucifix on her breast and the choice it presents upon it, the choice of pincers or hammer. The roses appear on Our Lady's shoulders when we choose to use the pincers to remove the nails from her son. The chains weigh her down when we choose to use the hammer to drive the nails into his flesh. All sin nails our Lord to the cross, while all our prayers and good works done in the state of grace pull the nails out. What will you be for him, nails or pincers? We would be greatly mistaken to look at these apparitions of our Lord and Our Lady in an isolated sense. We should instead see them as they are, part of a tapestry creating one unified message to the world. The specific sins that Our Lady called out especially were blasphemy and the profanation of Sundays, precisely the same sins called to the attention of Sister Mary of St. Peter, a French Carmelite, that same year. As Sister Mary was concerned that the messages regarding the Holy Face were experiencing a delay in approval, she knew the urgency of the message, and so she pleaded with Our Lady to appear somewhere in the world and make a similar revelation. At this point, all her visions of Our Lord had ceased, and within this time of silence, La Salette occurred. Sister Mary of St. Peter saw it as the answer to her prayers. Our Lord told her to use the instruments of his passion in her prayers to fight against the communists who were then emerging in, from France. These same instruments would appear on Our Lady's crucifix at La Salette. We see then a direct connection between La Salette and communism. One of the main punishments allowed by God to befall man as a result of sin, being born in France and eventually it spread to Russia. And Our Lady came in the following century to Fatima to give more warnings again of its spread throughout the whole world. The main prophet of Fatima, Venerable Sister Lucia, foretold that the entire world would become communist, including the United States. Our Lady warned of Russia's errors, spreading along with the annihilation of nations and the loss of countless souls. But the world has largely ignored her commands. These commands officially came through Sister Lucia in 1946, to pray the rosary every day, to consecrate yourself to her, to be invested in and to wear the brown scapular, and to do the five first Saturdays, and to offer up your sufferings. 
If the world doesn't respond to these specific commands from the lips of the one authorized by her as her prophet to speak on her behalf, then we will continue to see what we are seeing and much, much worse. We see the response to La Salette was quick. The bishop approved it and even excommunicated authors who spread lies about it and seemed to discredit it. The missionaries of La Salette were formed to spread the message throughout the world. The immediate, the, uh, the immediate, the immediate area around La Salette and large numbers of French ceased to swear and work on Sundays. They attended church with reverence, but still France and the world saw the fulfillment of all her threats of temporal chastisements. Although they were, mitig although they were mitigated in their severity, due to a partial repentance. The apparition had foretold the total failing of the potato crop. Our Lady said, by Christmas there will be none. By January of 1847, the French government had issued ordinances preventing the export of potato crops and facilitating the importing them due to shortages. But the great potato famine did not hit Ireland until the year of 1852. This shows the global nature of La Salette and the deep connection between this apparition and Ireland. When the Pope read the secrets confided to the two seers, he said that the message was not only to France, but for other countries as well. Our Lady warned that the wheat would fail. She said, let him who has wheat sow it not, the grain will become dust in the threshing. This was fulfilled by the 1850s when the wheat disease picked in ravaged French wheat crops. In an 1856 publication, the reporter described the diseased wheat as having a black spot and upon opening it, appearing as a yellow powder. She warned of a great famine in France where the babies will be seized with trembling and die in the arms of those who hold them. In the following year of the apparition, children died in great numbers by a, a disease known as suet. This combined with the complications due to cholera, the infant mortality rate skyrocketed. The children were first seized with an icy coldness. They began to tremble and within hours, died in the arms of those who held them, just as Our Lady had foretold. In regards to the famine, 60,000 people died in 1854, and another 80,000 by 1856. Even her prophecies of the walnut and grape harvests came to fruition. She said the grapes would rot and the walnuts would turn bad. In 1851, the walnut disease appeared. In 1857, a form of grape, grapevine disease known as odium appeared. We must remember these were mitigated chastisements due to a good amount of positive response from many of the French. We can only imagine just how bad things would have been had the people not responded at all. Our Lady warned of these things through the mediation of the children of La Salette. They were directed at everyone in and outside of France, not just then, but they are for our time as well. Our Lady made the direct connection between repentance and a relief of the chastisements. She said, if they are converted, the stones and the rocks will change into heaps of corn, and the potatoes will become as they were, self-sown on the lands. Showing the good we receive is directly related to our obedience to heaven's commands. We live especially in the time of Fatima, and we have received commands through a new set of children prophets, sent to confound the wise, who think that heaven no longer intervenes in history. It is necessary then 
to listen to the prophets, even if they are simple children. As scripture tells us, do not despise prophecy. The threats of heaven are real. The command of La Salette still stands for us. We know the triumph of Our Lady will not come unless enough Catholics pray the rosary, consecrate themselves to Our Lady, be invested and wear the brown scapular and do the five first Saturdays and offer up their sufferings for the conversion of sinners and in reparation for the offenses against the heart of the one who appeared on the mountain crying a river of crystal tears. We heed the words of Pope Benedict XVI when he said, the prophetic mission of Fatima is not over. The church needs to hear it from its priests and prelates, the words of the Bishop of La Salette upon the dire warning of a weeping mother. He said, we implore you, our very dear brethren, with a view to your heavenly and even your earthly interests, to enter seriously into yourselves, to do penance for your sins, and especially for those against the second and third commandments of God. We implore you, be docile under the voice of Mary, who calls you to penance, and who on the part of her Son threatens you with spiritual and temporal evils, if remaining insensible to her maternal admonitions, you harden your hearts. How bad will be the result of our indifference? Heaven rewards us and heaven punishes. The choice is ours. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Ave Maria Stella. Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more.